Good morning and welcome to the show. This is In Touch and I am Beth Christie, your hostess. In Touch is our half hour public affairs show, which means that at the end of the program today, if you are a member of a nonprofit group or organization, if you are a company here in the Hudson Valley helping out a nonprofit group uh, with either development, with membership, with education, we'd love to have you on the show to talk about what is important to you here in the Hudson Valley, in Orange County, in Sullivan County. So at the end, I'll give you a myriad of ways of which you can get a hold of me. So let me say this is pre-recorded. Any phone numbers, websites, Facebook pages, Insta, whatever it is that we may talk about today, know that we'll have all of that. And it will be in um, a blog post on the website for whichever station you're listening to this morning. So with that crazy lengthy introduction, uh, let me welcome and introduce to you... We have Chrissy Walcott, who is a member of the development team at the Anderson Center for Autism. So, Chrissy, thank you very, very much for being here, putting up with all this. <laughs> I'm very glad to be here, Beth. That's a pleasure. It's so nice to, to have you guys here. We were talking a little bit before we turned the mic on um, that the um, Anderson Center for Autism, Neil, who is the current director. That's right. Um, who is retiring after this year. Yes. He's been on the program a couple of times. Eliza has been on the program a couple of times. There's been other individuals been on the program, which is great. And I love it when we are able to almost do maybe a little bit of a follow up in the loosest sense of the term sure. of an organization that does so much for the community. And not just the community in the Hudson Valley, but individuals really throughout the country and individuals who and families who are dealing with a diagnosis of autism. What the Anderson Center has become uh, to me is amazing. What it does, how it's grown, how many people it helps. It's, it's incredible. Tremendous. It's tremendous. Sure. To think about the, uh, the number of lives that we've touched uh, over the years, yeah. the families that we've assisted, uh, the individual with autism who we've cared for and including the staff who have been a part of our team over these years. We've impacted many, many thousands of lives uh, yeah. since uh, we opened our doors to our first individuals with autism back in the late 70s, actually. You know, it's interesting. And again, we were talking a little bit before, you know, with, with Neil and, and like you said, the staff that has been there a long time, the dedication that is there, the education that continues to happen with the staff, with everyone, um, to really, it's not just saying, oh, we provide this service, no, you provide the service. Absolutely. Our services are only exemplary because of the staff that yeah. that provide the services. Our staff are what make Anderson Center for Autism who we are. They, uh, The staff who work with our individuals are unlike anyone I know. Uh, <laughs> I know I couldn't do the work. I don't have the patience for that yeah. type of work. But we have some angels in disguise who work with our individuals every day, doing everything from direct care to support services, clinical services, uh, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. What I also love, and I think this I think this is true of any organization, in any organization, I feel to be successful, you have to have people who have different strengths and different weaknesses. You cannot all have the same. You will not survive. It will not last. So your strengths. Absolutely. Yes. May be someone else's weakness is the same thing. You know, as you state that you could not do what is it they do, they probably would not be able to do what you do. And that's a healthy organization. Absolutely. We have many different skill sets at Anderson and we have almost 800 staff who work with wow. our with our okay. individuals. So I didn't know that. Wow. Yes. We, okay. uh, we are one of the largest employees. Employers in Dutchess County, actually. Uh, and these people do a little bit of everything from, like I say, from clinical and direct service to our individuals to support services. Uh, you know, we've um, we've got a team that's uh, eclectic and very diverse. And that's a good thing for our individuals because we serve individuals with very diverse backgrounds. They may all have autism, but our children and adults are uh, from, you know, obviously both genders come from all different backgrounds and ethnicities. And actually from all over the world as well. We not only yeah. serve New York State children and adults in our programs, but we also serve uh, children from out of state, and wow. we also accept international students as well. My goodness, look at what it has grown and what it has become. You know, I I'd shared before my husband worked there, it was Anderson School in the 80s, Yes, um, where there were some um, autistic students there, but there were also some um, other emotional difficulties yeah. um, that were there. And then it really... It, um, really became a focus and working with individuals with autism. Yes. What our leadership recognized in those early days was that there was a growing need for uh, niche service for individuals with autism, that there uh, is a particular type of service that's needed for individuals with autism and that we could hone our expertise and become professionals in that field. 
uh, especially serving individuals and families um, on the autism spectrum. And it's uh, been to everyone's benefit, uh, to the individuals we serve, as well as the agency as a whole. We're a stronger agency because we're focusing on providing service to individuals with autism. And the people who receive our services are getting expertise, unlike th- that couldn't be found right. anywhere else in the country. And April, of course, is Autism Awareness Month. That is correct. So it's... M- It's always great to have you guys here, but it seems like the perfect time to come in. It certainly is. It's great to bring awareness about autism and the fact that uh, now the CDC statistics say that one in 68 individuals are now diagnosed with autism and the statistic continues to grow. Sorry, I have a problem with statistic. You know what? I'm going to, like we said before, I'll be the one that'll say three things. You know, when you say one in 68. One in 68 and one in 42 boys. Wow. Yes. Yes. So think about a classroom, a classroom wow. of 30 or 40 individuals. That classroom probably has an individual with a diagnosis of autism. So with the increasing rates of diagnosis, there's clearly a need for expertise in the field. And that's what leadership at Anderson Center recognized, uh, like I said, in those early days in the 70s and 80s, and began to change our focus from a more generalized service to individuals with needs to uh, specifically autism. And today we are solely an autism service provider to children and the vast majority of the adults that we serve also have a diagnosis of autism. You know, it seems to me, and I I certainly don't have all the notes, but you know, from the first time that um, Neil was on and um, other individuals were on, the statistics were, I think, just not that long ago, one in 150. Yes, I actually have a t-shirt that I still wear that says one in 150. I'm a one in 150 child. And that was only... That wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't. Unfortunately, the statistic continues to grow. uh, And the need for Anderson services are there. And that's actually one of the reasons I'm uh, glad to be here today to talk about the kind of things that Anderson is doing to open up our community for individuals with autism and their families, to make our entire world more accessible to people with autism. Uh, it's, It's easy for someone who, like myself, prior to coming to Anderson to not know what it's like to have to go into the community with with someone, maybe your loved one has a diagnosis of of autism or your child, and to not feel comfortable and not feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, That many of my friends, I think, and family take for granted that they can just decide on a Friday night to go out to dinner and decide where they're going to eat. Is it going to be Chinese? Is it going to be pizza? What do you want? You just take a choice. A family with a child with autism has to consider, is it near the road? Is there a place where we can go and have a quiet time if we need to? Will the staff understand if my child needs to get up and pace around the room? Uh, All of these things that most families wouldn't even consider when they're planning a night out, a family with a child with autism has a lot more to be concerned with. So what we're helping families to be able to do is to enjoy their lives more fully by educating businesses and organizations on how they can better prepare their environment and their staff to provide a quality service to these families. And um, simple efforts, like simply recognizing that a family coming into your restaurant, for example, that has a child with autism, simply recognizing that and asking if they would like special care or if they would prefer to be seated in a particular place of the restaurant, uh, that alone can do wonders for a family. We actually, uh, one of our families came to speak at an event recently and told a story that the entire family hadn't gone out to eat in eight years together because of their child who has autism. They decided to take a risk and they, and a shout out to Coppola's uh, Italian American restaurant in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were our flagship autism supportive environment. And that was the restaurant that this family chose to have dinner for the first time out in eight years. And the experience was extraordinary. Uh, The mother couldn't stop crying, talking about the event, that she was able to have her whole family together for an entire meal without anyone looking or giving funny glances or saying that they needed to do something that they, you know, they, that made them uncomfortable. Uh, The, the staff understood that, Their child might need a little bit of extra time to decide on what to eat. Maybe he might like to get up from the table Mm -hmm. uh, unexpectedly. And they even accommodated him that he wanted to pace back and forth for a while. And they actually uh, had an area of the restaurant that the staff used to go back to the kitchen that they said that 
uh, this boy was welcome if he had to get up from the table and wanted to walk around wow. that he could go there and walk. And wow. the the entire family couldn't say enough great things about such a simple thing, such a simple event going out to dinner with your family. But to be able to do it for the first time in eight years and to have fun was was monumental for that family. Good for them. Yeah. You know, I, I remember speaking with someone who um, had two autistic children. Uh, they went to uh, Disney World and they had um, they had passes that would enable them to get to the front of the line. And it was a um, I, I forget the name of it, but it was for children who had issues. And she said that there were parents who were glaring at her like as if she had lied about it because her children appeared yeah. normal. And she said that at one point she turned and she said, don't think for a second. I, I wish I could stand in line for an hour with my children. Right. I would. I would. Right. Right. But I can't. And, and that judgment without people even knowing what a situation was. That's a big part of autism awareness. That's uh, one of the many reasons why we participate in Autism Awareness Month, because people uh, in ignorance sometimes judge other people because they don't know their background. They yeah. don't know their history. So uh, if we can have an impact for these people by sharing information and education and an understanding, I hope that the community as a whole will open up and be more welcoming to individuals with autism as time goes on. That's our goal. And that's actually the goal of Dutchess County Executive Mark Molnero and his Think Differently campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, we've partnered with him in various regards to help make Dutchess County autism friendly and autism supportive and supportive to all individuals with disabilities. It's really what they want. They want to be involved in the community to the fullest extent, just like you and I do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they, and you know, um, I have um, a, a nephew who is on the spectrum um, at a very different place than some of my other friends and their children where they are on the spectrum. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's the other thing. There's so many, there's there's so much on the spectrum. It's not that one diagnosis covers everyone or yes. that everyone has um, the same levels or the same um, things to deal with. Right. It's very different. There's a, it, absolutely, there is a uh, running inside joke at Anderson Center that um, everyone is on the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to some degree. We all have our own little quirks and things. Yeah. And when we are in a training and we're learning about behaviors or um, some typical things that someone with autism might perhaps do, we look at each other and say, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do that all the time. <laughs> like, okay, hang on. And that would make sense. Yeah. So, so it is, it like, is absolutely, everyone a, is on yeah, it, yes. it is absolutely a spectrum from the, mm. uh, you know, highest level of need <laughs> to an individual like you or I, who has simply just traits of yeah. autism mm -hmm. somewhere in us. Uh, so yes, there are individuals with very levels of needs all over the place, but the, the fact remains that being accommodating mm -hmm. and open and understanding is, is really what we're asking the community to do. Uh, and it's for everyone's benefit. Businesses yeah. benefit by opening up their business to a new clientele. Mm -hmm. Of course, the individuals benefit by broadening their horizons and experiencing new things that they might not have ever had a chance to do. And the families, of course, benefit as well if they're participating in these activities yeah. just by having a chance to be a family again when maybe they, they haven't been able to do that before. You know, I was going to say exactly that in terms of the businesses. You know, if you're a restaurant, if you own something that has, a, you know, an entertainment factor to it, um, e even a, a grocery shopping, any sure. business, whatever, if you can understand and if you can have a staff that is educated, then you you will have opened your arms and you will have a clientele. And Absolutely. they, if treated well, just like anybody, if treated well and, and they say, wow, this is the place to go. Oh, sure. Then yeah. your business increases because families will know. And, and that's part of the support of being able to talk and say, okay, this is a great place to be. You, yes. can, you can do this. Yes. You can help your children and experience this. This family who ate out for the first time in eight years is a great example of that. Yeah. Had they known of a restaurant that could support their child with autism eight years ago, they might be eating out monthly yeah. for the last eight years. So now that they finally have a, a place where they feel comfortable and uh, I'm sure they're going to be regulars. Right. Uh, and that's and that's just, you know, restaurants. We're talking movie theaters, roller skating, going to the mall, doing errands, going to the bank. We actually one of our more recent autism supportive businesses, M&T Bank, another shout out. Mm -hmm. uh, they're uh, 
uh, Hudson Valley chapters participated in our autism supportive environment training. And now their bank branches are officially autism supportive. Nice. So M&T Bank as well has the understanding and staff training now to support uh, an individual with autism or a family who has an individual in their family with autism to understand and to provide the accommodations that they might need to make their service uh, the best possible. Well, you know, when I look at our experience and, and with our grandson and things that we, we want him to learn and do and, you know, everything from, yeah, stuff around the house, but also taking him grocery shopping. So you see that whole process. So that's not an unfamiliar world to him. Oh, yeah. That not every day is, wow, let's go get a toy. There are errands to run the post office and the bank. And, you know, you need to do this. You need to take care of this and all those things. And, and as you were talking, I thought to myself, you know, for just a split second, um, you know, you put yourself as best you can in the situation where what if you, you couldn't do that? Like, right. And you wouldn't be able to go to the grocery store because you need to have someone be with him, but that yes. person would be you. So you're not going either. That's right. So That's then right. how does that work? I mean, so what the services that you guys are doing helps every aspect. Yes. Bringing, bringing life to our individuals and to their families uh, is is kind of a little personal model that I like to to share when talking about the things that we do at Anderson. Uh, we're helping families live their lives more smoothly and mm-hmm. more in a more richer manner. But we're also providing opportunities to individuals with autism to learn how to be an adult. Yeah. Uh, children learn how to be an adult by following their parents around and going on errands and mm-hmm. you know interacting with people in the community. By opening up that opportunity to individuals with autism, we are um, upping the game for them. We're making it more likely that they'll be able to succeed as adults on their own. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the more we can expose them to the environment that they will be living in as adults, uh, the better. So, you know, and the better the community is as well. Absolutely. I mean, it it really I mean, I know we keep saying the better, but it really is. And and it and it's it's educating. Um, all the work that you guys do, it's amazing. Like I'm sitting here listening to you in my head. This is the point where I'm going to ask you three questions all at once. You should yes, be prepared. I'm ready. Um, you know, before we turned on the microphone, I asked, you know, are there specific areas that you that you wanted to talk about? You know, you talked about the um, the consulting. And yes. On, so let's let's, yes, let's absolutely. bring that part into the conversation. Certainly. Uh, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit to uh, 2012 when New York State Legislature passed legislation to require insurance providers yes. to cover uh, diagnosis and treatment of individuals with autism. Right. Uh, that was certainly a game changer in New York State and uh, helped families in need of diagnosis and treatment, receive those services Mm -hmm. uh, in a much more affordable way. Uh, We have a clinic today which provides services to uh, individuals and their families based on that legislation. And we also, through our consulting and our autism supportive environment programs, reach out to the community in many different ways to assist in in diagnosis, in treatment, and also in environmental modifications that uh, schools or businesses or other organizations uh, might need to accommodate individuals with autism. So we're not only treating, we're not only diagnosing and treating individuals with autism and supporting their families, but we're also assisting businesses and organizations in the community that may not have a direct connection to autism, but who either want to expand their clientele or want to open their doors to uh, a larger audience, or just to just to support the community in a yeah. in a in a, a deeper and more meaningful way. Because if you look, and I'm going to go back to the statistics that you brought up before, one in sixty eight individuals, that's right, will be diagnosed in the autism spectrum. One in forty two is boys. Correct. And you mentioned you look around a classroom. If I'm a business, if I'm an organization, look around your membership, look around your clientele. And I think that very quickly you will do a little bit of math, probably quicker than I can, <laughs> but you will look at that and you will understand that there, these are individuals who frequent your businesses yes. or who could be at your business, who maybe you can help open up a, uh, an education for someone. Yes. You know, maybe you can open up a path you mentioned about, you know, children learn how to be adults by watching their parents. You know, maybe you can help make that happen. Exactly. Yes. And that's and, really powerful. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with Autism Supportive Environment and all the efforts this month and, of course, every month of the year is to 
help people understand that there is a large swath of the population who are being underserved and there is yeah. no need for that. It's simply a matter of understanding yeah. and and making simple and often cost free accommodations to uh, to accommodate these these people who want to be at their business. <laughs> so let's say there is a business or someone listening. Who do they contact at the Anderson yes. Center? Uh, they would contact Lisa Szynski and her telephone number is 845-889-9616. She can answer any questions that any business or organization, school district, or any other group of people have Beautiful. about autism supportive. And it's not just businesses. I want to no. make that clear yeah, as well. I apologize. That, yes. yes. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that autism supportive environments uh, can apply to any venue that brings in people, Yeah, you know as guests, visitors, customers, or whatever. Yeah, anything. Exactly. Yeah. And I and thank you because, uh, you know, I am, um, you know, when we talk about the show, I'm learning right along with everybody sure, else. We all so are. So I am like, I mean, learning how many staff members you, you have, right. learning these new statistics. So thank you for sure. correcting well, that and keeping us on the, on the good yes, path. Yes, and just, <laughs> just to add as well, uh, one of our, also our more recent autism supportive uh, groups who participated in the, in the training was the National Park Service. So that's oh, an example cool. of, uh, of an organization that you might not think of that, um, but could greatly benefit from training on how to accommodate people with autism uh, in a better way. Wow, that is that's tremendous. And this kind of leads into you talk about the autism supporting environment. That was one of the things that we talked about. So there are trainings that oh that, yes that folks, individuals, organizations can attend. Yes, we uh, have trainings on our campus from time to time, and we can also bring consultants to oh. your place of business okay. to uh, to train as well. We have um, many different options for. Uh, organizations that want to learn how to be more accommodating to individuals with autism, just give us a call. You know, the fact that you, at the beginning of the, of the program, talked about not only do you have uh, individuals who are here from New York State, but other states, but also yes. international. Yes. Um, that speaks to the quality of care, to the commitment, to the staff, to all that you have learned Certainly. It, and continue learning. So, you know, it's it's amazing that there is this um, resource yes. organization right here in the Hudson Valley uh, and, and that we can um, utilize. Absolutely. I, I may work there, but I also believe strongly that we are blessed to have an agency like Anderson Center in our Hudson Valley area. Mm -hmm. We uh, receive... And we, meaning Anderson, give services uh, that are um, superior to uh, to what they might receive someplace else. And yes, we serve children from out of state. We accept uh, referrals from uh, students internationally. Uh, we also actually, since you brought up the um, the expertise of Anderson, we have a program where we uh, enlist the assistance of international uh, professionals professionals who work in human services and specifically in the autism field who wish to train alongside our staff for a 12 month period. Wow. Uh, we uh, have fellowship opportunities for professionals in the field who want to learn more about how we uh, diagnose and treat individuals with autism. And I think That's we, have, really we have about a dozen or so uh, fellows who participate in our programs who train alongside our staff. They I, I, can't, I don't say they work with our staff because they're not paid. These are fellowships. Mm -hmm. But they train alongside our staff and learn our best practices to take back to their home countries and to implement in their own programs. Wow. That's impressive. Now, as I'm looking at the time, let's see, it's, it's 23. We've got about six minutes left. Believe okay. it, I know this goes fast. Like at the beginning, you go, I'm never going to make 30 minutes. <laughs> but it, it does. It goes really fast. If there is someone listening this morning that... Maybe they've just received the diagnosis of autism for yeah. someone in their family or circle of friends and um, or they've had the diagnosis and they don't really they don't really know what to do. How can they get a hold of Anderson Center? What's the best way to do that uh, to help out these families? Yeah, well, the first thing to know is that you're not alone. We provide service to many people in similar situations to whoever's out there listening. And uh, the place to call would be Anderson Center for Autism. And the number is 845-889-4034.
or if you're just looking to uh, read some information and maybe watch some videos or hear some podcasts about Anderson Center and the services we provide, you can visit our website at andersoncenterforautism.org. Just as a place to, to start. Absolutely. Or even if a parent is wondering. Yes. Maybe there's a doctor's appointment coming. They're not sure what that diagnosis is going to be. And like for me, I know I always try to educate myself as much as I can. If there's a a diagnosis, if there's uh, something coming along that I've not had before, there's something where it's it's very powerful for me to be able to go on a site, a a legitimate site, because obviously we be careful what we're doing on the Internet. But Anderson is a legitimate site, obviously. And to get information, to get education, because I feel like when I then am in the room, I will ask a more intelligent question. Of course, you're more prepared. Yeah. You at least know a little bit than you did before yeah. and are, are ready for, for what, yeah, what, what you're looking for. Definitely, um, people will find information on our website, a general information about what Anderson provides and the services and uh, programs that we have. Uh, I would encourage anyone with further questions or who can't find information that they're looking at, looking for on our website to call that number, 889-4034. And someone there can direct their question to the best person to answer. Yeah, that's one of the, there's many benefits of having the Anderson Center here, but that's one of them is to be able to get information. Someone will know. Yes. You are not, like you said, you are not alone. You will not be left out there to drift. Correct. That will not happen. Correct. Yes. There's a lot of families that have found themselves in the same place. We've been helping them for years and I'm sure we can help. The next family as well. Absolutely. So, okay. So, closing calm. Wow, yes. this went so fast. You have to come back, and you will come, and someone will come back. You <laughs> someone guys will come you back. Will come back. Final thoughts, some closing comments that you want to uh, leave with folks this morning. Final thoughts and closing comments. I feel that Anderson Center is uh, at a place where where we're moving forward beyond autism awareness. We are moving into a realm where we everybody knows what autism is now. You'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't know what autism is or what it's what the typical behaviors uh, are associated with autism. What we need now is the action. We need individuals, organizations, and businesses to take that bold step and to educate themselves on what does autism really need really mean for my business. What can I do and what can my staff do to open up my business or my organization to accommodate people with autism and to generalize this with other disabilities as well? There are many opportunities in the community for people with autism and other developmental disabilities to participate and to live fuller lives if those of us on the other end of things will simply open our minds and our doors uh, to them. Well, well. Well put. Chrissy, thank thank you you so very much for taking the time and being here today. My pleasure. And all that you do. All that you do and the stuff that we never see. (laughs) But thank you for the work that you guys do. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions about anything that we've talked about today, if you need a phone number, if you need the website, please go to um, the website of whatever radio station you're listening to this morning. It will be there. Keyword will be in touch. Uh, take a look at that. If you would like to be on the show and talk about what is important to you, here's how you can, you can get a hold of me. Uh, my phone number here is 845-471-1500, extension 159. Email is beth.christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y, at townsquaremedia.com. I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Probably more things than I should, but I'm there. So find me. I'd love to have you on the show. Take care of yourself and those you love. And we will see you right here next week.